Welcome to Hear God Every Day. I'm your host, Sarah Witten. Get comfortable, open your heart, and let's talk about how we can be more sensitive to God's voice in our everyday life. Welcome back. This is, I can't even believe it, the 99th episode of this show, which is absolutely um, mind-blowing to me and such a testimony to the Lord. Uh, And as I was sitting down, so like every time when I go to record, I sit down and the first thing I write is episode, whatever number it is, and the title, you know, that God's put on my heart. And I went to go write episode 99 and I thought, wow, a hundred episodes. I remember, I guess it was about two years ago or so. And, um, somebody had reached out to me from charisma and had said, have you ever thought about podcasting? And I laughed. I was like, um, I'm, I write, I don't really speak. I don't do that. And, um, I actually had to repent of saying that I, I have been so humbled by how God has used this and use this to grow me, but also, um, just made it a really cool thing that has connected, um, all of us from all different parts of the world, different time zones. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful thing that God is doing. And, um, so yeah, I would say I'm going to do something extra special for the hundredth episode, but I'm going to be honest. I never know what God is going to do. Literally, it is just submitted to him in prayer every time, and it's as much of a surprise to me, usually, as it is to you guys. So um, we will see what he has for the 100th episode, but I am so excited and just so grateful. Uh, Today, I have um, really what what started out as kind of like a, a vision, but Uh, has grown into a bigger word that I'm going to be writing later this week, whenever time between kids and family and um, homeschooling and all these other things, uh, these plates that I feel like are spinning right now. Um, Whenever that time comes, I'm going to be writing this in an article, but you guys are going to get a little sneak peek. And it was one of those words where, you know, as God was showing me more and more about this picture that he gave me. It was just so sweet. Like, have you ever gotten a word from God and just been like, wow, God, you're so sweet. Like that is such a kind, um, comforting, exciting, encouraging thing, like all, all rolled up into one. And that's kind of what I have in this word. And so it is going to be really hard for you to listen to this entire thing that I have gotten from God and not get some encouragement out of it for your season. So stick around till the end. There is something for you. Before you even start, though, I'm just going to pray because I want this to come across exactly how God revealed it to me and exactly how he wants to say it. And, you know, he is just so much more eloquent than I am. And so I am praying that um, he just kind of take the reins. So, oh, Lord, thank you so much for just the privilege of getting to connect with you and connect our journeys with you in this time, because even though they're just so diverse and you have us all on so many different amazing paths, it is so cool that there are these commonalities, these common threads on each of our journeys that allow you to speak to so many of us at once through your words, both your biblical words, your prophetic words, um, God, you're just so good. And you're such a good encourager. Thank you for your encouragement. And I just pray that for each and every person listening in this time, that they get that personal little nod from you. That thing that they're like, oh, I know that was God speaking directly to me. Like that, that was for me. And so I just pray that each and every person listening has that moment. And Lord, that you can show them even deeper revelation, even more than this, that it be so specific to their season and what they're going through, God, that this just be um, kind of like the the starting point and that it would just continue to unfold and um, to be an encouragement and a blessing and an edification uh, to them this week. 
And so um, we just ask that every word said here be your words, nothing added, nothing taken away. And um, we bless it in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray. Amen. So the other morning I woke up and the picture that was in my mind as I sat down to have my God time, I was like, all right, Lord, you know, whatever you want to show me today. And I saw a picture of a nest of eggs and it was kind of like tucked away, kind of back in this quiet place, like a, like a cave or a little nook secluded. And what I had written as I was getting this, I had like jotted in my journal, um, hidden, safe nest with eggs. And I, the first thing that, that came to mind as I was like processing this was potential over time, right? Because eggs have this potential that is realized over time, but it's early and my, my writing's messy and it all runs together. And so it said potential over time. And I'm like going back, trying to reread my notes to, to put this in podcast form basically. And I was like potential over time. And then I thought it was so funny because, um, yeah, of, of what we're going to talk about, about these seasons of, um, of sitting on eggs. So I wrote hidden safe nest with eggs, potential over time. And then I wrote, sit on it and wait. And this doesn't sound like an encouraging word. You're like, you know, we don't like to sit as people. We don't like to just wait. We don't like the process of it all. And the reality is when I first was receiving this, it actually was super hopeful and encouraging to me because I don't know if you have been in this place or if you uh, are in this place right now, but sometimes you're in a place where you just feel kind of like you're, you're waiting or you know, you're kind of in between things. You're just hanging out, you know, you're sitting, you're engaging with the Lord and, you know, he's teaching you these amazing things, but you know, you don't really know what the path ahead looks like. And, you know, you don't have a specific, clear, like mission or goal. You're kind of in between things and you're just sitting. And for me, I'm such a doer. And so sitting times make me nervous. <laughs> I'm like, what's going wrong? Why is nothing happening? Why do I not know where I'm going? I need to get some details, which really in the process of trusting the Lord is the opposite of what I need. But when I saw those eggs in that quiet, safe place and heard, sit on it and wait, potential over time, I thought about how when an animal, like when a chicken is sitting on a nest of eggs, what they're actually doing looks very idle and still, and like they're not doing anything. They're just sitting and waiting. But actually that sitting is purposeful. We know that those eggs have to be sat on in order for that potential over time to be realized, right? In order for that moment of hatching. And so as I went about my day, um, surprisingly, there two other ways, in two other ways, the word hatch got brought up. And I'm like, it's reminding me of that vision again. And I was like, whoa, that's so weird. And so I decided to look up hatch. Okay. And it has several different definitions. So just follow me on this. All right. Because if you are in a hatching season, which I feel like all of us in some way can kind of relate to, then you're going to be able to pinpoint the moment in this podcast where you're like that, that is my word. That is the encouragement that God is giving me for this situation. Okay. So as I'm looking at patch, first definition, an opening in a roof, floor of a building, aircraft, or deck of a ship. A roof, floor of a building, aircraft, and deck of a ship. 
Okay. I don't know about you, but when I hear about openings in the roof, I immediately think of the paralytic and Jesus and his friends literally making an opening in the roof and lowering him down. And I thought it was so beautiful because from the perspective of the paralytic, he was just hanging out. (laughs) He wasn't able to do anything. He wasn't doing anything. Yet a hatching moment was happening because God was orchestrating a miracle even as he just sat there. Sometimes we think, oh, well, if I am going to have God do a miracle in my life, I'm going to have to either do something to make it happen or I'm going to have to know that God is doing it because then I'll see it coming. You know, we just, we don't really think often about God doing miraculous things that we don't foresee. Right, we always see the the problems and the setups for miracles, and we're like, "Oh, maybe God will do a miracle in that." But rarely do we think of, "Oh, I bet God is working on miracles in my life that I don't even see yet, and that I don't have to do anything to be a part of just receive." I just need to sit. I just need to sit on my mat. I'm being lowered to Jesus. I'm being taken to my miracle. I just need to sit on my mat. Okay. Um, the opening in a floor of a building. So in the part of the country that we live in, we have one of the few basements in the entire area. And what's beautiful is this basement is the space that we use for our youth ministry. So it's like, when I think of basement, I think of ministry, but a hole in the floor where you're like going down, um, you know, in other parts of the country, they have wine cellars and it's this space where you go down and all of that wine is sitting and waiting. But as it's waiting, there's actually a lot of chemical processes that are going on that is very active. It's, it's changing the nature of the wine. It's, it's making it better and better and taking it to completion on this process that it's on. Right. And again, this beautiful picture of, as we sit in the place that God has put us, sometimes our sitting is not passive. It may look passive, like the chicken sitting on her nest. But that sitting in his presence is actually creating a hatch moment. The rest of that definition, the aircraft, the aircraft hatch opening. (laughs) I mean, it's like that is a completely different type of hatch moment. That is like I am taking a leap of faith. I think of... um, of going skydiving, right? Which I have never been, don't really have a desire to go. Um, But when that aircraft hatch opens, it is that moment where you have to overcome. If you listen to going all in um, a couple episodes ago, you have to overcome like that everything in you that doesn't want to step off the edge and take that leap of faith. But that simple step, that simple release, can take you into that hatch moment of that leap of faith. And then the deck of the ship, the hatch going up to the deck of the ship. Okay. So when you're on the deck, that's, you know, typically where a lot of the uh, gear is where you can steer. It's where you do a lot of the the work and it's where you can see and have kind of a, a view of the horizon. And, um, when you're having a hatch moment that is like that coming out onto the deck of the ship, this is like a, the Lord kind of opening up, hatching this insight, this revelation into um, maybe seeing a little bit more 
of what he's been doing, getting a, a, a greater view. Because the crazy thing is, is on a ship, no matter what deck you're on, if you're um, on the the top deck or if you're down below, you're still in the same place and you're still going to the same place. But the difference is the visibility. It's the visibility. So maybe your hatch moment looks like the paralytic in the mat. Or you're being set up for a miracle that you don't even know about. Maybe your hatch moment looks like that leap of faith, that step off the edge as that hatch opens. Maybe it looks like a moment of emerging into something that is um, a place of greater visibility, greater steering, greater workability. Regardless of what kind of hatch moment you're having, um, the, the second definition of hatch is the cover for an opening. And the beautiful thing about the Lord is whatever openings he creates in our lives, he also creates the cover for it. Right? He doesn't just create the opportunities. He creates the protection that coincides with the opportunities. He gives us the open door and he gives us the umbrella. Another part of the definition of hatch is to emerge from an egg or a chrysalis. Emerging from an egg is a total new beginning. It's a start. So maybe God has you in a hatch moment of just starting something completely new. And in that time, there is a sitting and a stillness and a waiting for just that right moment of hatching. And then the Lord is going to direct you in how to uh, care for and nurture that thing that he is growing in your life. Chrysalis, on the other hand, is transformation. You know, some of you are maybe not having a new beginning, but you're having a big change in something. And with that big change, uh, things look different. You um, have to act and move and, and uh, live in different ways sometimes. And sometimes we feel like because things feel chaotic or because we feel like we're stumbling, that something must be off. You know, why does this feel like such a blur? Why am I, you know, having such a hard time getting my footing in this new season? Sometimes it's just that you've gotten out of that chrysalis. Like you think about a butterfly breaking out of a chrysalis, you're tired, you're drying your wings, you're trying to figure out, you know, what has just happened and how do I move in this new season? And so maybe that's you. And if so, give yourself grace and also let the gratitude fill you of knowing that that is what's happening. Thank you, God, that you have just brought me through a chrysalis, that you have just hatched me out into some big changes, but that they are going to be for my good. Lord, teach me how to fly. Teach me how to use my wings. Help me to pace myself in this season. Show me what this looks like and help me to not lean on the ways that I used to function in because this is something new. To hatch can also mean to produce by incubation. Okay, we talked about this a little bit, but when you're incubating something, you are sitting, and by that sitting, you are actually providing the heat that is required to hatch. And so some of you feel like you're just in this waiting season, not by choice, but you're just kind of waiting on something. And if that's the case, that weight, even though it feels passive, is not passive. You're incubating tomorrow's promises. 
you're incubating tomorrow's promises. Without taking this time to sit and be still before the Lord and to let Him teach us and speak to us and grow in us those things that we are going to need for that next season, without having to sit and take that in, we're not going to have what it takes to hatch into that next season. Another part of the definition I found of hatch, I'm telling you this, this definition went on and on in each piece of it. I was like, oh yes, that's so good. God. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes, God. Yes. And so the next part was to make a plan, specifically a secret plan. And I want to know how you would feel if you knew that God had a secret plan for this season for you. Because sometimes we think, like I said, we, we think we're going to see it coming. We think we know what God's up to. And at best, we only know in part. But God sometimes hatches those plans on us in the sweetest ways. So think back right now on your history. I bet there's a time you can remember when God has hatched a secret plan on you that was totally unexpected, but so, so sweet and so good. God is doing that again in this season. We often think we know his plans, but we forget that he can surprise us in a good way. You know, like we're used to like, oh no, if we think of like being surprised, we think of being surprised, like blindsided, like some negative thing is going to come out of nowhere that we didn't foresee, but you know, God knew about it, thankfully. But this isn't that. This is when God has purposed and planned delightful things, breakthroughs, blessings that we had no idea were coming. And he hatches them on us. The last part of the definition that stood out to me um, literally was floodgate. All right. A hatch can be a floodgate. Who knew? I didn't. And (laughs) when you're sitting on a nest, if you're in a sitting on a nest season, like, come on, raise your hand. I am so there with you. If you're sitting on a nest, it rarely feels like a floodgate. You're not like, whoa, this is so overwhelming. This is crazy. All this stuff is happening. This is so powerful. I can't believe all of the power and all the goodness and all the wonder of God that is coming from sitting on this and waiting for his timing. You know, no, that's not how we feel. Sitting on a nest does not feel like a floodgate, but it is the buildup and the preparation for that floodgate moment, that like moment of hatching, that moment of breakthrough has to have all of that build up. And so, you know, I talked a little bit a couple of weeks ago about how like taking a leap of faith, it's like that takes two seconds. You can take a leap of faith. You can cliff dive in two seconds. The preparation, both like physically climbing up and the mental preparation to get to be where you can take that leap takes way longer. And that is actually the piece that God is most concerned in building in us. So you may not be in the floodgate. You may not be in the leap, but you are in the preparation for it. And don't discount this time. Don't discount this time of smallness, of stillness, because without it, we're not going to have what we need or the mental um, frame of mind to be able to take that leap or to be able to embrace that breakthrough or to be able to run with it when that hatch moment comes. So I want you to take this to God this week. Ask God, what does it look like for me to nest, to sit in this season? Okay, what does that look like? Because it looks different for all of us. And then just asking God, can you remind me that I'm sitting on promises? Sometimes we just need God. Like, and, and sometimes we feel bad about asking. Like, oh, I don't want to ask. I don't want him to get annoyed with me. But like just asking God, hey, God, can you just remind me? 
just remind me one more time. Like, just confirm to me, like, that this is worth it, that this is good. You know, I think about if one of my kids came to me and like, rearing kids is hard and we have to make them do some things that are not fun for them, but it's great for who they're becoming and they have to learn hard lessons. And, you know, if one of my kids came to me and said, mom, can you just remind me that all of this is for good stuff and that, you know, um, that this is working good in me. Can you just remind me of all of the fruit that this is going to yield in the future, I'd be like, oh baby, yes. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, this is going to grow this in you. This is going to do this to your heart. This is going to do this to your character. This is going to make you able to do this, this, and this in life. And this is ultimately going to get you to those dreams. And so if I, as a parent feel like that, how much more does God as our heavenly perfect parent feel like that? So whatever little personal way he has of reminding you that you're sitting on promises, you know, ask him, he'll give you a little wink. He'll give you that scripture that ties to that thing that he said to you that one time, you know, in the ways that God does in dreams, however it is in the ways that he so beautifully ties that back for our encouragement he'll remind you again. So let's not despise the season of hatching, whether that hatching looks like sitting and waiting, whether it looks like taking that leap, whether it looks like stepping into kind of new vision or new understanding or figuring out a crazy transition and change. Whatever that looks like, I just encourage you to take that hatching moment to the Lord and ask him what it is you need in this season to be able to sit in his promises and to know that as you sit in his presence, that it is hatching good, good things for his kingdom. Thanks for spending time with me today. If God spoke to you through this time, visit arrowsofzion.com for writings, resources, and ways to partner with me in reaching the unreached with the gospel. You can also find Arrows of Zion on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Have a blessed day, and let's meet here next week.